Chapter 13 Visitors to Rosings In a quiet way, with walks and occasional visits to Rosings, the first two weeks of Elizabeth's stay soon passed. Sir William Lucas had returned home, but the next week brought an addition to the family at Rosings. Mr. Darcy was expected, and when he came, he brought with him Colonel Fitzwilliam, his cousin. The day after their arrival, they came to the parsonage. Colonel Fitzwilliam was about thirty, not very good-looking, but in person and manners most truly a gentleman. Mr. Darcy looked just as he had always done, was polite, but spoke little. Elizabeth only lowered her head in greeting without saying a word. Colonel Fitzwilliam entered into conversation directly with the confidence of a man of good family. After a long silence, Mr. Darcy inquired after the health of Elizabeth's family. She answered him in the usual way, and after a moment's pause added, My older sister has been in town during the last three months. Have you not seen her? She thought that he looked a little confused as he answered that he had not been so fortunate as to meet Miss Bennet. It was some days before the next invitation came from Rosings. While there were visitors in the house, the company from the parsonage were not necessary. When the invitation did arrive and they joined the party in Lady Catherine's sitting room, Lady Catherine received them politely, but it was clear that they were not as welcome as they had been when she could get nobody else. Colonel Fitzwilliam seemed really glad to see them. Anything was a welcome relief at Rosings, and Mrs. Williams' pretty friend had attracted him. He now seated himself by her and talked so agreeably that Elizabeth had never been half so well entertained in that room before. Their conversation was so full of spirit that it drew the attention of Lady Catherine herself. As for Mr. Darcy, his eyes had been soon and repeatedly turned towards them with a look of interest. At last, Lady Catherine called out, What are you saying, Fitzwilliam? What is it you are talking of? What are you telling Miss Bennet? We are speaking of music, madam. He said, "Of music, then please speak out loud. I must have my share in the conversation. If you are speaking of music, there are few people in England, I suppose, who have a better natural taste in music than myself. I would have been an excellent performer." She then inquired after the playing of Darcy's sister Georgiana, and he spoke in brotherly praise of her skill. She must practice continually," Lady Catherine went on. "I have told Miss Bennet several times that she would never play really well unless she practices more. And though Mrs. Collins has no instrument, she is very welcome to come to Rosings every day and play the piano in Mrs. Jenkinson's room. She would be in nobody's way, you know, in that part of the house." Mr. Darcy looked a little ashamed of his aunt's lack of good manners, and said nothing. When coffee was over, Colonel Fitzwilliam reminded Elizabeth that she had promised to play to him, and she sat down immediately at the piano. He pulled the chair up near her. Lady Catherine listened to half a song and then talked to her other nephew, until Darcy walked away from her. And moving towards the piano, positioned himself so that he had a view of the performer's face. Elizabeth saw what he was doing, and at the first convenient pause, turned to him with a smile and said, "You mean to frighten me, Mr. Darcy, by coming with all this ceremony to hear me? But I will not be afraid, though your sister does play so well. I shall not say that you are mistaken." He replied, "Because you could not really suppose me to have any intention of frightening you."
Elizabeth laughed and said to Colonel Fitzwilliam, "Your cousin will teach you not to believe a word I say. It makes me want to behave badly towards him." Then let me hear why you are angry with him," said Colonel Fitzwilliam. "You shall hear, but be ready for something very terrible. The first time I ever saw him was at a ball, and what do you think he did at this ball? He danced only four dances, though there were very few gentlemen, and to my certain knowledge, more than one young lady was sitting down for lack of a partner. I had not at that time the honour of knowing any lady there, except from my own party. True, but can nobody ever be introduced in a ballroom? Perhaps," said Darcy. "I would have behaved better if I had asked for an introduction. But I am not someone who can easily make friends with strangers." Shall we ask your cousin the reason for this?" said Elizabeth, addressing Colonel Fitzwilliam. "I can answer your question," said Fitzwilliam. "It is because he will not give himself the trouble. I am certainly not the ability that some people possess," said Darcy, "of holding a conversation easily with those whom I have never seen before." Here they were interrupted by Lady Catherine, who called out to know what they were talking about. Elizabeth immediately began to play again. Lady Catherine came nearer, and after listening for a few minutes, said to Darcy, "She uses her fingers well, though her taste is not equal to Anne's, and would have been a truly great performer if her health had allowed her to learn." Elizabeth looked at Darcy to see whether he agreed with his praise of his cousin, but neither at that moment nor at any other could she see any sign of love. Lady Catherine continued her remarks on Elizabeth's performance until her carriage was ready to take them all home. Elizabeth was sitting by herself the next morning, writing to Jane. While Mrs. Collins and Maria were gone on business into the village, when she was interrupted by a ring at the front door, the signal of a visitor. When the door of the room was opened, to her great surprise, Mr. Darcy and Mr. Darcy alone entered. He seemed astonished too to find her alone, and apologized for the interruption by letting her know that he had expected all the ladies to be at home. They then sat down, and when her inquiries after Rosings were made, seemed in danger of sinking into total silence. It was necessary, therefore, to speak of something. So. Wanting to know what he would say on the subject of their leaving Netherfield so quickly, she remarked, "How very suddenly you all left Netherfield last November, Mr. Darcy, Mr. Bingley, and his sisters were well, I hope, when you left London." Perfectly so, thank you. After a short pause, she added. I understand that Mr. Bingley has not much idea of ever returning to Neverfield again. It is probable that he may spend very little of his time there in future. If he means to be very little at Neverfield, it would be better for the neighbourhood that he should give up the place completely, for then we might possibly get a settled family there. I should not be surprised. Said Darcy, "If he were to give it up, if he found another property that suited him." Elizabeth made no answer. She was afraid of talking longer of his friend, and having nothing else to say, was now determined to leave the trouble of finding the subject to him. He understood, and very soon began with. Mr. Collins appears to be very fortunate in his choice of a wife. It must be very pleasant for her 
to be settled within such an easy distance of her own family and friends. An easy distance, do you call it? It is nearly fifty miles. I should never have said that Mrs. Collins was settled near her family, but it is a proof of your own close ties to your home. Anything beyond the very neighbourhood of Longbourn, I suppose, would appear far. Then he moved his chair a little towards her and said, "You cannot have a right to such very strong local feeling. You cannot always have been in Longbourn." Elizabeth looked surprised. The gentleman experienced some change of feeling. He moved his chair back again, took a newspaper from the table, and said in a colder voice, "Are you pleased with Kent?" A short conversation on the subject of the country followed. It was soon brought to an end by the entrance of Charlotte and her sister, who had just returned from their walk. What can be the meaning of this? said Charlotte as soon as Darcy was gone. My dear Eliza, he must be in love with you, or he would never have visited us in this familiar way. But when Elizabeth told of his silence, it did not seem very likely to be the case, and they could only suppose his visit to result from the difficulty of finding anything to do at the time of year. Gentlemen cannot always stay indoors, and the nearness of the parsonage encouraged the two cousins from this period to walk there almost every day, sometimes separately and sometimes together. It was plain that Colonel Fitzwilliam came because he found pleasure in the society, but Mr. Darcy could not come for that reason. Because he frequently sat there for ten minutes at a time without opening his lips, Mrs. Collins did not know how to explain it. He certainly looked at Elizabeth a great deal, and she once or twice suggested to her friend the possibility that he was interested in her. But Elizabeth always laughed at the idea.